What is good, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. KG is back, back with another upload in yet another international break. I was ready for the last one. Not so much this time. I was enjoying the results we were getting. I was enjoying the momentum we're building. But look, it's the last one. And then once this one's done, it's all systems go once this international break is done. And then we resume the football again. Thankfully for me, though, in a sporting way, I've got the Penguins that restart, NHL restart. So I got a few games of them to enjoy before the next Leeds game. I hope you got something from now until then as well. Uh, before I get into the video content, I just want to th thank Karen Curtin and Robert Shaw. And Robert Shaw, who's also become a member of the channel. Memberships are in the description. They really do help out in a, in in ways that you can't imagine in terms of supporting myself and the channel. So thank you for the continued support of all members. And thank you to Liam Moore for a very generous super thanks on the last video too. Really appreciate all the love and support on that. Um, and shout out to everybody. Now, listen, this video is very simple. Okay. It's who is the best signing of the summer so far. Now it could be your favorite. It could be who's made the most impact. Whatever your whatever your uh, categories, whatever your parameters, go with that. But I'm going to shout out, I'm going to mention the main four. I think the, the four that have made the most impact. Uh, but I'm sure there'll be honorable mentions for others as well who have made an impact in the little time that they've played. What I do not want to hear, and this is a rule, people, much like the Saw movies, I don't want to hear about Jorginho Rutter. I don't want to hear about Dan James. I don't want to hear about Archie Gray. This is about new signings only. It's not about the most improved, and I'll throw Pascal Strauch in there as well. It's not about the most improved. It's about who's made the most impact from the summer signings. Very simple. And without further ado, let's get into it. Now, up first is the goal getter, Joel Perot. Um, as you can see here, eight matches, five goals, better than one every two games so far. And I do believe that's going to improve as he gets used to the system. We've already heard in full what Danny Farker thinks about him, himself and Jorginho Rutt and that partnership that is just blossoming every game that passes. And I do believe that his goal ratio will get even higher in this team, especially once players like Willie Nanto are back uh, and Jed Spence as well, who we're not going to speak about in this one. He's in the honourable mentions because he's obviously he's injured right now. But as the team gets stronger, I believe Joel Pro will get even better. And for all the, the games that many people think that he's he's done nothing in, to have a ratio of five goals in eight matches shows how efficient he is. And I love efficient players. I love players that if you're a striker, you get goals. I don't want to hear about you running the channels. I don't want to hear about you holding up the ball. That's all well and cool if you're adding goals to it. I think there's a lot of discussion at the moment going on with Erling Haaland, of all people. It's amazing how it goes. They did this this time last year with Erling Haaland, where uh, all, he, all he was doing is scoring goals, like it's the easiest thing to do. And do Man City need, need him to do more? It, it, it's And it, we kind of got it on a much lesser scale, obviously, it, with Joel Perot. In the games where he doesn't score, it does seem like he doesn't seem to do a lot. But that's because even in Daniel Farker's words, he is not the best presser. So it is about, I believe it's more about the team trying to get the ball to him more, give him more opportunities uh, in and around the box because we know he can hit them from outside, inside, running in late. We've seen him with the tap-ins. We've seen him with long-range shots. He's got a lot to his bow, but he, he's got a lot of strings to his bow. But for me, with the more service and the more that he gets more comfortable within the, within the team, I think we're going to get an even more efficient Joel Perot. And for me, when I look at the partnership between him and Jorginho Rutter, I like what they're, what they're serving. And I just feel that if he is to come out of the team, this, the drop-off to the next striker is huge. It's absolutely huge. So Joel Perot, for me, is a key member so far. I'm interested to see if you believe so too. Now let's move on to Joe Rodon. Now he is a guy for me that has transformed the defense and it's quite clear. And unlike a, another example who's who's coming up next is that we've seen the impact when Joe Rodon hasn't played in this team. And it's ugly. <laughs> it's ugly, ugly, ugly. And we can see here, he's got a red card for us already. But the context behind that is that the guy was doing the job of two defenders. And with Joe Rodon, his his arrival, how much calmer, how much, how much better do the defense look with this guy in defense? Not only is he quick, which is quite unexpected for me, because I knew he wasn't slow, slow, but he's even quicker than I thought. 
but he, he's so good on the ball and bringing it out. He's dominant in the air. No one is beating Joe Roden in the air like easily so far. He is just given so much quality to this defensive line that it's making other people around him look calm. We talk about Pascal Strout looking calmer. We've already seen what Strout has looked like when he's had his old partner next to him. It's spooky. So Joe Roden, for me, he's, got, he's played eight matches of the 11 so far. I feel that he is one of the, the best signings we've had this summer. And, hey, listen, if he continues in the vein that he's in, is there scope for him to possibly stay beyond this season? Who knows? But for me, Joe Roden, with his calm, his dominance, the partnership he's forming with Pascal Strout is a wonderful thing to see. Clean sheets are happening because of that. Elan Melier looks calmer with Joe Roden in the, t in the team. I can't wait to see what, what these guys look like once Jed Spence is back as well. It's going to be a wonderful thing to see, people. But Joe Roden, he could be a lot of people's pick. But I feel like this guy may get a, a majority of the of the loving, and that is Ethan Ampadu. And, the, and that's where I go with, we've seen what we, we look like without Joe Roden. We haven't seen what we look like without Ethan Ampadu yet. But that is a scary thought, though, people. I'm not going to lie. It's a very scary thought to think what we look like without Ethan Ampadu because with every single game Ethan Ampadu plays, he's just consistently good. Every single one, he's been consistently good. And even on the one game, which I, I'm, I'm, it's escaping my mind, where he wasn't his usual outstanding self, he was probably a 6.5. That, that's that's incredible. That's incredible consistency. I think we everyone is it's plain to see he shouldn't be in the championship. And the fact that we've got him in this league, it, it gives us a huge advantage over a lot of teams that we're going to play. Not every team in this league has somebody like Ethan Ampadu. He can play in multiple positions, but I think it's plain to see his best position is in front of the defense. And he cleans up in that area so well. Um, he's formed a lovely partnership, of course, with Archie Gray. And we'll see how that develops as well. If Archie Gray's moved out to the right back, you know, the, the John Stones, Trent kind of role that Archie Gray played in the last game so well. But Ethan Ampadu as well, he's another one that he just he just gives the team a, so much more protection, so much calm. And we have to have someone like Ethan Ampadu in there because of our attack being so heavy, whether it's Somerville, Nanto, Dan James, Joel Perot, Rutter. There's so many attackers that you need an Ethan Ampadu in there. And we haven't had to go without him just yet. But it's going to be scary when he's not there. But we do have a replacement, of course, who I'll mention in the honourable mentions. We just haven't seen him enough to know if he's going to make the same impact as Ethan Ampadu. But there's even shouts for Ethan Ampadu to become captain. I hear it because he's... And I've said it many times before, even at Exeter City, and I saw it at, at Sheffield United especially, he was leading a lot of those guys on the pitch. These are uh, grizzly vets. And he was going there on loan, telling people where to go. Love to see it. Love to see a leader with quality both... Uh, professionally and on the pitch, lovely to see. But as we can see there, he's on three yellow cards. He's a couple away from a suspension, so we may have to find out what it's like without him soon. Hopefully it's not for a huge game in the league. The fourth one I want to bring up, and I think it's very fair to say, has surpassed even his most ardent fans, and that is Sam Byram on a free transfer. This signing for me, when it first happened, as, as you all know, I was like, Okay, what is Daniel Farker cooking here? What what does he see from a, a, a player that has been injured a lot in the last couple of years? What does he feel he can bring? And by every game, with every game that Sam Byram has played, he's got more comfortable in that left back, in that inverted role. When he first started, I maintain it, when he first started in that role, he was brilliant defensively. But going forward, it was a bit of a struggle because he, he can't really swing with his left foot. When he was going forward, he would cut back in and pass to the midfield a lot. But as the games have gone on, he's gotten even more effective, more comfortable in that role. And you can see there, by the way, 10 matches played. And he's just completed three in a week. We I never expected that from Sam Byron. And I'm, I don't know if he expected that either. But the fact that he is doing everything to manage his body, the, man, the fact that he's doing everything with the second chance with Leeds United, has been a breath of fresh air for me. 
I think he's been absolutely superb. And I can see a lot of people thinking that maybe Sam Byram is the best sign of the summer purely because he was a free transfer. And there wasn't really that much expected of him. There was a lot of people already saying that, yeah, he could, he could be this, he could be that. But I think even his performances so far have surpassed those expectations. I think he's been absolutely fantastic overall. I think he's been absolutely brilliant. And long may it continue. And he's been that good, people that even when uh, Junior Furpo is back, and I've long long said about having a natural left back on that side, I don't think you should move Sam Byron from that left-hand side. I don't. I think he stays at the left-back spot because he's making that spot now his own, in the words of Louis, in the word of Louis Walsh. You made it your own. He's making it his own. And I've just been super impressed with Sam Byron. I really have. Um, and it's always good when someone um, exceeds your expectations. It's better than when you sign somebody and you think they're going to light the world up and then they're, they're a dud. Sam Byram has been far from that. He's been one of our key players this season. Quite quite honestly, 10 matches played and he's already got a goal back. He's already got a goal. And I think that he's going to add some assist to his game as well as he gets even more comfortable on that left-hand side. So let me know if Sam Byram is your pick. Now, courtesy of LUFC Data, who is always on it with all the transfers, these are the rest of them. But obviously, we can see, you know, Carl Darlow has been brought in as the backup. Uh, Jed Spence has been injured, which is a shame. But when Jed Spence is back, oh, oh, yes, yes. Byram, Strauch, Roden, Spence. Oh, yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't wait. Glenn, uh, Ilya Gruev, we haven't seen enough of him, or I haven't seen enough of him personally, but it's it's quite obvious if anything is to happen to Ethan Ampadu that maybe uh, he'll be the one to step in there. But he ha he's been getting like charity minutes here and there, so he's a clear backup. Uh, Glenn Kamara, I think even he may get a couple of shouts as being some, some people's favourite because, quite frankly, when Glenn Kamara's played, he's been when he's had to play in the midfield with Ethan Ampadu, He's looked like he's played with him for the last five years. It's been it's been incredible to see Glenn Kamara just the last game, the hustle in order to to get the the goal going. Uh, I think it was for Dan James. That comes from Glenn Kamara's uh, pressing from the front. He is a real box to box midfielder, and he gives us another option in there when we do need to move or rest Archie Gray. He's been he's been brilliant so far, Glenn Kamara. I got to say, and it's just been in limited time, but that's the impression he's made. So, I can imagine he'll get a couple of uh, honourable shouts. And of course, there's Jane Anthony, but Jane Anthony at this point in time hasn't really played enough. He's he's had a couple of, of cameo appearances. He's done okay. He's done uh, okay in parts. But again, I think once the the season gets going and the games come thick and fast, and he gets played more in the rotation, maybe we'll see more. But I don't know if he's done enough to to get a you know a full breakdown as of yet. But maybe some of you have been really impressed with his cameo so far. So I'll be interested to to hear that. Um, and that is it. Yeah, that is it, people. I'm, I've gone for the main four. I've gone for the main four. And and listen, it could be anyone else for whatever reason that that's cool. But yeah, let me know who is the signing of the summer so far. And it's as simple as that. Uh, I'm very interested to see the names. If you don't have reasons, just put the name. Simple as that. Um, but guys, before before I go, you know the drill, people. Please hit a like on the video. Um, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And drop your comments below. And until the next time, I'll see you in the next one, people. Peace out.